Hey there, in today's video, I am using my jelly plate, which I have not used in about six months. So I thought I need to bring that out. I need to make some collage papers and why not just have you guys take along with me for the ride. Now, listen, not every uh, paper turns out perfect, but what I use my papers for when I'm using my jelly plate is mostly for collage. So I'm going to be tearing those up or using them in a small, some kind of smaller capacity. And generally there is something that, you know, I like about every piece that I make. So hopefully you also have a jelly plate. And if you don't, I wouldn't run out and buy one unless you really are motivated and want to do this kind of, uh, this kind of printmaking. It is fun and it is kind of slightly addictive because once I got started, I didn't really want to stop but I don't use it all the time. And so, you know, you have to decide, you have to weigh the costs against, you know, maybe maybe see how other people use it. Speaking of which, I would be curious, how do you use your jelly plate? What kind of things do you do with it? I am by no, by no stretch of the imagination unique or even using it in a, you know, a very creative way. I'm just making marks and making paper you know, prints on to various pieces of paper. Now, bear with me because I do believe I call my jelly plate, a deli plate a few times in the video. So, you know, just hang in there with me. I, yeah, I <laughs> doing the best I can. So anyway, thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoy this fun, experimental kind of playful time. Before we get started, I thought I would just go over all the things I'm going to be using today. Obviously, we have, uh, I have the jelly the jelly plate or gel printing plate as this one is called. And mine is an eight by 10 size, which I think is a great all the way around size because most of my papers are at least that big or I can put two smaller pieces on. So that's the jelly plate that I'm gonna be using today. And then I, I have all kinds of mark making tools. I'm gonna to do a lot of mark making. So I have these different catalyst wedges or um, catalyst tools that are soft edged so they won't damage the jelly plate, which I have some marks in there from when I first started using it and I was not careful. And so there are some indentations in there that somehow don't really show up, but they are there. So I have a uh, color shaper, different catalyst tools. These are not actual catalyst tools, but they're similar in that they have the rubber tip and they won't damage. I have the brayer, which is kind of the traditional way to move around the paint that, um, but I'm also, I'm going to use brushes and so, you know, I, I want to do it in a slightly different way, not just, just always using the brayer. So the other thing I grabbed were, were some different stencils that I have. And I thought that might be kind of fun to put those on there as well. The paper that I've grabbed uh, is a variety of paper. So I have this, I guess I should just pull one over at a time so you can actually see what I'm showing you. The first thing that I have <clears throat> is this deli paper that you can see it has a crease in it because I think it's actually made for, you know, deli for sandwiches kind of thing. And it has a shiny side and a matte side. And I found like with the deli plate, the matte side is better. Often when I'm just using it for whatever, I, I don't really make a difference on which side that I use. But for, for taking the prints off, I typically use the, the side that is not shiny. But if you care about this crease, which I think you can see, there's a crease in it, then that could be a problem in terms of using this. I don't mind because typically I just tear it up and use it for collage anyway. Most of my uh, jelly prints, that's what I do with those. Okay, the other paper that I have is actually, this is tracing paper. So it is very similar to the deli paper and that it's very thin and transparent, but it does not have the line and it works very similar. It's not quite as strong, I would say, if that makes sense. Uh, I don't know the weight of the paper, but it definitely, I don't know if it's that shiny, more uh, thicker deli paper, but this is a little bit thinner. The other thing I have is which you could use printer paper. I typically don't use printer paper. I'm not really sure. I guess I don't really, yeah. So, but I think printer paper would be great. It's nice and cheap and it would be good to practice with. I actually have a pad of kind of cheap, I think it might even be like a Target brand. It's called paint and marker paper. I think it might've even been in the children's. I'm not really sure why I have it, but often I use it. It's a little bit heavier, but then it's definitely heavier than a, than a printer paper, but it definitely, if I just want, something more opaque, 
then this is the thing to use. And it's it actually is stronger and it will peel off nicer. Another thing that I grabbed is just your regular uh, sacks. So I cut them into you know rectangles so that I could pull the brown craft paper. Now, if you have brown craft paper, that's great. But I happen to have a lot of grocery store bags. And so I just kind of cut, cut them down so that they would work. And honestly, the great thing about this one that they're free, well, we pay a nickel now because we have a tax, but in order to use, a, a, get a bag at the store. But the, the nice thing about this is that there's no risk. It's like, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't really matter because you haven't really, this is just something you're gonna probably put in your recycling bin anyway. So I love stuff like that, that makes it super no risk and it doesn't really matter. The other thing I have is my beloved vintage book paper. So I have some larger books that I've pulled from so that it will cover the entire, or pretty much cover the entire deli, um, deli, jelly plate. So I have some, you know, from a book, I have some from a dictionary, and then I also have some from music. So these are the things I'm gonna use today, just to show as an example. I don't know if I'll actually use all of them, but I kind of wanted to show you and give you some ideas for ways to get started. Oh, I also wanted to show you, I'm using just a variety of paints, mostly, they are neutrals. I'm just going to do, I, I just, you know, I'm drawn to neutrals, but I'm just going to mostly use neutrals today for what I'm doing. Who knows? Maybe I'll bring in a bright color, but odds are I will just use this uh, bin of neutral colors for today's example. So, all right, we're just going to go ahead and get started. I just kind of want to show you what I was using since it's a little different than some of the normal other projects that I've been showing you. To get started, I think I'm going to use the Payne's Gray. And I'm just gonna jump right in. And for this first round, I think I will use my brayer. And I have brought over this old dictionary that I'm going, that's very thick, but I'm gonna use it to put my brayer, the paint off my brayer. So I'm just going to get started here. I might move that aside. And even though I'm using heavy body paint, I think you could use any kind of paint because obviously I'm not using it in a thick way. For the most part, I'm. I'm spreading it out in a thin in a thin way. And I think if you did not have a brayer, although you traditionally, well, traditionally, I don't know if that's even traditional, like I even know, but most people that I've seen in videos and classes and things, they tend to use a brayer to spread it. Now I am gonna use some other tools. And I think what I'm going to do to begin is, I'm just gonna take this color, sh uh, it's not a color shaper, but it's a rubber tipped, marker and I'm just going to make some simple marks there and then let's just keep it easy let's start with the let's start with the craft paper it's from Trader Joe's okay so let's just see what happens here and you're gonna lift it off and actually wow <laughs> you would think that isn't that cool but it's super cool coming through the through the craft paper so I'm gonna set those behind me and I'm just going to keep going. I'm not going to clean off this in between. I'm going to just keep adding. But this time, well, I think I will just, I'm going to bray, bray her for a little. Let's bray her for a while until we, get our, until we get our bearings here. So this takes a minute to spread. And obviously, if you had thinner paint, it would probably spread easier. And it does not have to be... Um, you know, it does not have to be the exact everywhere. And I kind of like the idea that there's some thin spots and some thick spots. Let's use that marker paper and just see what happens with this. And uh, I know some people use a tool to press down their paper. I do not have that tool and I, I find that my hand works just fine. So for me, wow, I just, I, I'm already loving these papers. I can envision them ripped up. I could envision, you know, and used as collage. They're just, it's just something about it that you cannot replicate with a paintbrush or with just your traditional tools. So it's just super fun. Let's just do, continue to do, I'm gonna use all the different colors and then we'll go back and I'll, I have some other ideas. So we'll use, use one more round of this and then we will try some, uh, another, another technique. But that way we have some backgrounds and we can use those to put some, and then see what I'm gonna do is I'll put this on here one more time. I think you can kind of see that. And then I'm just gonna tear that off and that also becomes collage paper. 
So let's draw some more in there. Let's do some marks with this tool. And I'm just going to scrape in those little, kind of like the tick marks that I've liked. And I do have shown in the past, I do like a good tick mark. Just, it's simple. And it's an easy way to add interest. What haven't we used? Let's use some book paper. Should that already? Okay, let's just... Put that paper right there. And let's peel it off. As you okay, so there's some interest. Sorry about that. Uh, you and you know, can see the other colors coming through, which I really like. And because I'm using these neutral colors, they all are, are going to really work together. In my opinion, they're going to work together well. So what haven't we used? Let's use the Rostiana this time. Mm -hmm. And let's use, what haven't we used? Let's use the deli paper, which I'm going to use not on the non, on the non uh, shiny side. And we'll see what happens here. And I even like this crease mark down the middle. Just, it's just some fun, just some fun ways. Let's use the burnt ember and see what happens. Ooh, my burnt ember is, it's really thick. I might, <laughs> I might set that aside. Sometimes when they get, my paints get really thick like this and they barely come out, I realize I need to just use this tube up and get a new tube because I'm going to use this at some point and it's going to be like it is right here, gloppy and not very movable. Now you can use, there's different, you could, I could use water with this. I could use, and I might, but there's different things you can use to help spread the paint better. It's just that then I, I kind of target this and say, okay, let's use this paint up because it's or it's drying out or there's something, it's not as, it's not as good as the other paint. Let me put it to you that way. And I generally always have a backup and that, so there's no reason that I can't just go get that backup paint. I just, I hate to run out and then I hate to not, and I, I, I like a good bargain. So I try to watch for things when they're a good price. Sometimes I buy paints in bulk off of eBay and so then I generally always have a backup. Okay, let's do another mark. Let's try this. And it doesn't have to be symmetrical, although I guess I'm kind of making it symmetrical. And see what happens. What haven't we used? Let me look at my stash over here. We have not used the tracing paper, so let's give let's give it a try. Let's see what happens with that. It's good. It's not that just that pure brown on the clear. That isn't as interesting, but we're going to add some layers. So we'll use, let's, let's use just this toning gray. I should keep these in order so I know what I'm using. Actually, the white, that might be good. Let's see what happens with the white. Ah, I wasn't going to. I was going to use it on a paintbrush. So in that case, when I use it on a paintbrush, I'm not going to put it directly on here. So I guess we're going to brayer this on. Because uh, I'd like to use that, if I use a paintbrush, I'd like to just dip my paintbrush in it versus, now i got a big glob of that right there. Uh, be, other than just using, using it on there and trying to spread it out that way. So this little corner is not getting covered. Okay, not that it has to, because there's no right or wrong way to do this. And if you have any suggestions or ideas or even people that you follow that that have really interesting and unique ways to do use a deli plate, I would love to hear because I sometimes just, I think, I've got to tear this piece apart. I, I just sometimes think, oh, I don't know what I should do on my deli plate. But then once I get started using it, then I don't want to stop. But I know there's some really great ideas out there and people do all kinds of interesting things. And I do have some other ideas that I might show in another video. I think I like it better on, you know, when there's, well, this is me. I do like the layers. I like that, that the music comes through, that you can see pieces of it. I like when there's different colors. I like the, you know, the diff, the, what that projects, I guess, the, the different layers. It adds more interest, in my opinion. So some people would like it very plain, 
but I'm not, you know, I, I, I do like kind of the layers where they, the things pop through. Okay, so let's we'll take a ghost print. Let's just use our craft paper. Look, someone has my name on this. I don't know what that was for, but that was, that's not my handwriting. Okay, so we're going to take what's called a ghost print, which is what is left over. That is interesting. And I'm going to set that aside. Now I'm going to add this gray in, and I'm going to add it with some marks, but I'm just going to add the paint right here so that I can pick it up with my paintbrush. And I'm going to add, I'm going to take my paintbrush, and I'm just going to add, and I probably put too much paint there. Again, I'm going to use my beloved tick marks, which I could, I could branch out and do something different, right? So if you guys have some good marks that you like, I'd love to hear them because I kind of sometimes just get stuck with this and circles. Well, and my beloved ladder as well. So I guess because this is so simple, no matter what I have, you can always, you can always do this. Now look what I did. I put so much paint down. That's crazy. So let's go back to, I guess let's use this paper. Let's see what happens here. Actually, what I should start doing is looking behind me where I have all the, that's kind of fun. Just, I know that's just plain, but actually I do like that. So, you know, what I should do is start looking behind me and say, what could use some more marks? I'm going to put this on here and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. See, once you start layering them, that is really cool. And then it's not each of the marks aren't perfect, and I really, really like that. The problem. So I guess I'm going to go over the whole thing. So I'm going to put this down. Actually, I could, I could brush it on just for a different effect. So let's try that. Let's just brush that on. And I'm not going to go over the whole thing. I think I'm just going to let's see what happens. I, don't, I know typically when I see things done on a, on a jelly plate, you don't see that, but I'm, oh, and my, my okay, <laughs> you guys, please do not mock me. Look what just happened. It's because I don't treat my paintbrushes as good as I should. This one obviously was loved, beloved, and used, and used, and abused, and so no mocking me, but you can if you want. Okay, so that needs some marks. Actually, I have the stencil. Let's put the stencil down. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what this is, what's going to happen here. But this might be kind of fun, or maybe it'll be nothing. Let's see if it's fun or if it's nothing. Or the, possibly the next one will be fun or nothing. Okay, so that is not fun, but it's something. Okay, so let's pull this up. You know, you give it a shot. Actually, let's put, I'm going to put that just on, on top of this because I can't stand to waste any paint and there might be a few marks. I kind of did that off camera, but here you go. That's, that's what happened with that. Now let's take another one and see, you know, this, this one right here that had nothing in the middle, this might be perfect for that, but you know, it's hard to, it's hard to, it's hard to know. Well, not, I, it's fine. It's fine. Not everything is going to be the best, but you know, I'm not, this is not being done to, this is, this, I'm not creating these for masterpieces in and of themselves. This is all going to be collage. So let's take our color shaper and try something. I'm just going to make some lines. You can see, I like to keep it simple. Although I do have a couple ideas, I might do, I have a, another idea for the jelly plate that I'd like to explore, and I might do that with you guys because, you know, it's more fun when we're doing it together. I think I'm just going to use this one again, since I've already just used it, and let's see what happens. Although, you know, I keep thinking I should, I do like those stripes, I like that. You know, I like those simple patterns, those simple designs. And let's see if there's a little bit left, I can put it on here. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. But I hope this just kind of, eh, a little bit of the outline of the lines. I hope this just gets you thinking. Like if you have a deli plate, I, a deli, 
deli. It's not a deli plate. It is a jelly plate. If you have one, what kind of things do you do with it? I would like to know because I see people who are, you know, use them all the time. And then me, I kind of forget about mine. And then I do use it. And then I use it for a while. And then I don't use it again for a while. So how do you use yours? And then how do you use it for mostly for, I mean, obviously I use it mostly for collage. I did, was watching a video and the person did this straight into, I'm trying to think, if I remember her name, I will link it below. She did an example where she, let's see, let's make some more marks. Let's just do some writing. She did it straight into her art journal. And I thought that was so cool, but you'd have to, yeah, it, it looked a little bit cumbersome. So I wasn't really sure about that. Let's do another craft, another Trader Joe's bag. Let's see what we got here. Not super interesting, but I do like the craft with the with the white. So let's try to finish. Let's try to add some more to a few of these. I think I'd like to do another thing of stripes since I've got this right here. Let's do that. Could be a trying to use all the paint up. But I also do not want my stripes to be perfect. And I kind of, I think the last round was kind of a little more perfect. So let's look back here at my stash and say, what could use that? And I'm going to suggest that we use this one and see what happens. Because I think the layering of the deli plate is what makes it super cool. And then you can have multiple marks like that. I love that. So this one, this was, this, I'd leave this now. I don't need, I don't need a, a ton, but, and you know, some get a little bit too busy and some, you know, aren't as quite as interesting, but let's see if I can just, what would happen if I just painted some circles on here, which is another favorite design of mine. Let's paint one going off. And I always feel like anybody can paint a circle. So, all right, let's see. Let's look and see if there's something back here that could use a circle. Okay, let's try this one. Yeah, that's not bad. I get, uh, you can see that some of the stripes also came out. I probably, I don't know if I'd add anything more to that one. So we'll set that one aside. I do like some of the simpler ones. You know what I'm gonna do now? I think let's brayer a color over the top of this. Let's do, you know, I don't know that we've done a raw umber. Let's do the raw umber. big one. I'm not really sure what to do with it. Maybe we just, you know, maybe I just, it's not really, the paint is pretty thin. So that was I just a big X over the top. Let's see what could use a little bit of that brown. Maybe, maybe this one, probably not. I don't, I'm thinking now that I chose it, that's probably not the best one. But since we're just experimenting, yeah, that's not bad. And actually I'd probably do another one. Let's do a dark color. I think a dark color would be great. I'm gonna keep that right here and we're gonna find, we're gonna do something with the Payne's Gray. Another mark, what do we want? What kind of mark should we do? How a, yeah, probably should have used a different brush, but that's okay, it's just, you know, we're, <laughs> I start getting critical and then I realize this does not matter. This is just, we're, I guess because I'm on camera. So I'm a little more, I'll be honest. It's a little more intimidating doing something on camera because you don't have the luxury. Well, I could turn it off and then, you know, edit it out and then do something different. But then that does, that just takes a lot of time. And then it's not real. It's like, okay, I, I'm pretending to be real. And even so, I still do edit some of it out. I'm trying to edit out some of my, you know, when I'm stumbling over words. 
a little bit of that. So that was just something right there that I thought of while we were doing it, some dots. Another simple thing, a ladder and some simple dots. Now, I was gonna put it on here, I guess I still will. Okay, so I do, let's see, I guess, there you go. I like it, kind of, but here's the thing. I can also just throw this in the recycling bin <laughs> if I really don't like it. And if I really don't want to tear it up into something. But, you know, some of these, just the dots, I'm not sure the ladder, I think I made too thick. It's fine. It, it doesn't really matter. And that's the thing. I'm trying to say, be creative and know that not everything is going to turn out. So some things will work out and some things won't work out. So as you're seeing me do this, some parts are going to work out. I probably don't like the ladder, but I probably do like some of these dots, and I like that. But if I cut, if I were to use parts of it, possibly I would. Another thing I sometimes do with this heavier paper, sometimes it's too heavy for actual collage because it's just so thick. But I also sometimes, if I like the whole sheet, I will just put it into my art journal at, on top of you know a blank paper page because I don't want to get rid of it necessarily if I if I like it or I might keep working it until I do like it but the reality is we're not going to like every single thing we do yeah. let's now, do the light and see where we go let's put some in a couple spots actually and let's put some let's put some burnt, uh, yeah burnt sienna with it should have done that separate but okay <laughs> Okay, just for the first one, I think I'm going to use it this way. Press it down. I don't think most of it comes up. Yeah, just a little bit, but it's more about pressing it down because I want to use that. Let's put that there. And I think we'll use this one, even though I do kind of like it, like it by itself. But let's just let's just see what happens. Can't get too attached to this stuff. Are you? Are you done? Then you stop. Then you stop exploring and 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 making something new. I do like it. So it just kind of made this, you know, you can see the alphabet in there. and Yeah. Okay. So what else? I need a dark color on here. I have a couple that need some darks. And what is another pattern that we could make? Although some is missing. Well, hmm. Should I bray or some? Let's know. Let's just fill in. Let's just kind of do it. Let's just do this. Because I'm not a, all the spots that don't have paint, that's what we're doing. Because here's the thing, I'm not a, del, a jelly plate expert. I'm not, I don't pretend to be, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know all the, you know, the ins and outs of the best way to use it. But what I will say is I like messing around with it and trying. And so I'm willing to do that. And that is to me the most fun part. So I'm not claiming that I know all the ways but I am claiming to suggest, I'm not claiming, I'm suggesting that you give it a try and see what you come up with if you have a jelly plate. I wouldn't run out and buy one unless you're super interested in it. I happen to have one because, again, back in the day, I was like, oh, I got to have all this stuff. And I have some regrets now. I do like this jelly plate and I have used it. I, like I said at the beginning, I, I use it hit and miss and I would like to use it more often. But like, you know, if somebody has any great suggest other suggestions or ideas, I would love to hear them. Okay, so we've got some darks here. I'm going to put this one on it and see if we can get a little bit more interest because there wasn't much contrast, and I think a couple layers is typically better. I don't know. That's, you know, it's fine. It's kind of interesting. So it's in more interesting than the way it was. So there's a few, there's another one that needs some darks. So I'm going to remove this piece of paper because I was using it as a palette. So it got pretty gnarly. So let's use this Payne's Gray again. Well, that we have a lot of Payne's Gray on here. So let's go back to the raw Sienna and see what happens. 
and let's put some raw umber with it. Let's try this. I know in general, it may not show up really because the paint isn't that thick. Oh, but it did. Okay, I kind of like that. All right, let's see. Let's take that off and see what's left. What we can, let's see if we can get a little bit onto this. This one's pretty plain. I'm sorry, I'm moving the table and it's probably shaking up. Sorry about that. Okay, wow, it almost entirely covered up those marks, but you can see them below. Now this one I feel like needs a little bit of dark. So a little dark contrast there. So maybe I'll grab, and I have two more that needs a little bit of dark. So let's, let's see if we can do something with the Payne's Gray. And instead of putting it on here, I think I'm just gonna make some mark lines. Okay, all right. Let's see, let's grab that one that needed the dark. Actually, I think it was this one right here. Let's see if this helps it out or if it needs something beyond that. Oh yeah, I think that helped. I think that helped. You can see that. Okay, so then I have this one is pretty un uninspiring, so, but I think it needs a whole mess of color. So what could it be? What would be a nice color for that one? Would it be white? Would it be gray? Would it be burnt sienna? Let's see what happens. Well, it completely took away all those stripes. And maybe it needs a little bit of light. I don't know. So, you know, not every one of these, like I said, is going to be the best. Let's try this one to see if there's anything left on this plate. And that helped that one out a lot. So as you can see, you can create, quickly create a lot of different pages, collage papers using things you have free, papers you have bought, uh, just, there's a, just a myriad of way. We're gonna do one last one and then I'll show you, I'll do a quick show through of the, of the ones I've done. You know, we're talking, they're not, they're not at the genius level, but it is fun to do. And I hope you'll give it a try. So I'm gonna use, this one could use, as you can see, some dark again. We just kept getting kind of to that mid-tone, which I have to say, I do spend a lot of time at the mid, in the mid-tone level, but it is, it is also good to use to, you know, you need your lights and darks to make things interesting. So I don't know what I'm doing, but actually maybe I'll just go back to the circles doing something Doing something weird like that wasn't really working for me. And circles almost always do work for me. So especially if they're wonky and weird. So and those did end up kind of being wonky and weird. Okay, let's see if we can lift those up. Yeah, okay, that, that's exactly what I wanted there. That turned out great. Is there anything else that could use a little bit? This one right here, it has circles on it already, but let's just put them, let's put it down and see if we can pick up a little bit more of this darker circle. I, I keep saying I'm just about done because I, you know, obviously you got to go explore on your own, but that, that is good. I like that. 
everybody's got to kind of start creating, making their own, their own marks and their own, because we're all going to be drawn to different colors. Okay. This one could use some lights. Okay. I promise this is it. This is it. We're going to use the raw sienna and I think that'll be, that's it guys. We're done. But I think this is the one that had the stripes. So actually I might go back in. I might go back in with the stripes or some kind of marks. Maybe let's just do tick marks. And while we've been doing this, I have thought of a couple other things I'll show you in another video that I've kind of forgotten about, which I think would be fun. So, okay, we'll do this last one and then I'll give you a quick preview. Oh, guys, that isn't light enough. Let's get some white in there. <laughs> That's, that is not, that is not light. I should have grabbed my Titan buff. That's what we needed. We needed a beige. I, I really wanted to keep it neutral because, well, because I love neutrals. But then you ended up, you, then you end up with midtones, which is the, the middle value, which then there's not as much interest. But okay, let's try this one more time. And I like that they're not going to line up. I think that'll be kind of fun. Okay, now we're talking. There you go. Love it. So I do have a little bit on my plate. Is there something here that could use a little something? We're going to do this one. And I promise, I promise we're going to be done. I promise. It's hard. When, like you try it. Once you start, you're going to have a hard time stopping just like me. So that's it for today. I'm going to clear up the space and I'll just show you the papers that we made together. And then next time, I think I have another idea for something using the jelly plate. So. Be to be continued. Thanks for watching.